Hello and welcome to the channel. Today I want to show you some plugins and tools inside FL Studio that most users don't know about. They're pretty well hidden. And whether you started literally yesterday or you've been using FL Studio for maybe 5-10 years and want to get some more function out of it, this should be a great video for you. I'll get right into some audio demos in just a moment, but all of these plugins are for mixing, production, effects, and you load them on your mixer. But the reason they're a bit hidden is because if you go to your mixer, for instance, I'm going to start by processing some electric guitar. If I just go to uh, select a plugin here, they're not actually in this list, they're within another plugin. So first you have to load Patcher. Patcher is a very powerful plugin that lets you create your own effects chains and your own plugins within it, to be honest. But the important thing is you don't need to know how to use Patcher at all uh, to make the most out of this video. You simply go to the presets at the top, left click where they are, and you can see this massive list appears. So these are plugins and tools that other developers have made, and they're included in FL Studio. So the first range I want to show you is the 1K range. I put them all on the screen, and you've got choruses, compressors, delays, distortions, doublers, phasers, reverb, all sorts of different effects, but they are distinguished by only having one knob or dial on the interface, plus a few extra tools for volume in and out, and it just simplifies the whole effects chain. So I'm going to show you some of these on guitar right now. I've loaded the 1K compressor, which just has one big dial here and an in and an out gain. And you can see that as I turn this dial round, lots of parameters on the compressor change. And this is a very simple interface, but you can also dive into the map here, and you can see that what's going on under the hood is quite a bit more complicated. Let's go back to the surface here, and I'm just going to play uh, this guitar round, and you'll hear some really nice compression being added. A quick before and after. So I've dialed in quite a nice compressed tone that's a little bit more loud, it's a lot more full, just really simple, with no fuss, and it didn't require a ton of CPU power either. If you look down here on my mixer, I've loaded a few more patchers, but you might be confused about which is which, so a quick tip, if you middle click with a mouse, or shift and left click, you can rename your plugin, so I'm just going to call this 1K Comp, and I can quickly assign it a color as well, and that way you're not going to get confused about which patcher is doing which effect. I'm going to quickly load up some more effects, so on Patcher again, up here in the presets list, this time I'm going to go to the Yulian or Yulin uh, presets, and I'm going to go to the Stereo Exciter. I'm hopefully going to add some easy stereo width to this single guitar. <laughs> Nice. And using the third instance of Patcher, I'm going to load up the 1K reverb and just add a splash of reverb to the guitar. And again, you can see that as I turn this, it's changing multiple parameters on the reverb. And this particular tool gives you a little bit more control because you can also change you know, the delay, the reverb size, and a few other parameters and controls as well. So it gets a little bit more complicated as you can see by going to the map over there. Dialing in those effects took literally just a few seconds. Let's do a before and after. So it's just a lot more interesting and we've created a ton of tone without having to worry about diving too deeply into the plugins because a lot of these presets are set up and calibrated really well. Let's move swiftly on to an example with some drums and guitar in the chorus, so let's just take a listen to what we're working with. In this case, I've loaded the Yulin Simple EQ guitar, which is on the list just here, and it's processing those stereo heavy guitars. So I'll play it uh, with and then without, and you'll hear quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. 
both of those were good tones, but I've used this EQ to simply make uh, it a little bit more forward and a little bit more aggressive. It breaks it down into bands just with a couple of words describing it like warmth, brightness, high end, etc. So let's just have a little play with it and then I'll show you what it's doing. <laughs> I guess the idea is that you're supposed to dial in a tone without worrying too much about what the EQ looks like, just use your ears. But if you go to the map here, on the EQ2 you can open up this EQ and you can take a listen to see what is being affected by each of these bands. And maybe you wouldn't have used these EQ curves yourself, but I know certainly when you're a beginner it is very important to get hands on with an EQ and actually learn how to use it. But sometimes you just want to load up something and be able to dial in a tone without worrying too much about the technical aspects of it. Now, if I go to one of the presets, which is a lot more uh, technical, such as this five band dynamic EQ, which is crazy good if you've got time to learn it. If I go to the map, you can see that it's quite complex. I mean, to some people that might actually be simple, but I think to a lot of us, it, it at least looks a little bit daunting when you first look at it, if you don't know what's going on. And the reason I wanted to have a bit of a discussion about this is what I've seen is that the more advanced uh, people become with their production and music uh, and their understanding of software, the more people gravitate towards um, interfaces and plugins with a ridiculous amount of control and, and uh, you know, parameters to affect, and also stuff that's just extremely simple with just one or two dials where you just dial in a tone and you forget about it. If I'm recording or if I'm recording someone else, I can just throw on a few of these effects, especially when you're brand new to the software. You just throw on a bit of compression, a bit of reverb, and keep your production session going. Keep your momentum moving forward in the project. In my opinion, there's few things that kill sort of a creative production session more than when you're the engineer and you're just sort of clicking through loads of different plugins, loads of different settings, and you're tweaking things, over mixing it, over producing it, when really you should just be getting some great ideas down, you know, working on building out a song, building out an idea, and not really diving too deeply into the plugins. But by all means, if you've been producing for five, ten years and you know your plugins inside out, then this doesn't apply to you because you can load up, you know, a complicated reverb plugin and I know that you can dial it in in just a few seconds. But think back to when you started production, you know, maybe a reverb plugin might take you a few minutes to actually dial in a good tone. And sometimes when you're capturing ideas, recording guitars, drums, a couple of minutes is all it takes to sort of uh, kill the energy in the room or kill the momentum of a song. Not to try and stress anyone out, but the idea behind this, um, if I go back to the screen here, if you can learn where they are, there's a lot of just plugins where you can just load them up and they can give you either very simple or very complex results very, very quickly. There's lots of very clever tools that, especially that Yulene has built into here. So hum removers, intelligent de-essers, especially sort of like the um, dynamic EQs, because FL Studio doesn't actually have uh, a dynamic EQ built into it yet. And one of the plugins that's especially interesting to me is this Vocal Rider plugin up here, which is trying to sort of level out uh, without compression, just by riding the gain up and down uh, to try and level out a performance. So that might be a really interesting one to get used to, but as you can see uh, behind the scenes, it's pretty complicated. So I could go into a load more examples, but I think it's probably best that you just dive through the presets and find what works for you. But I also want to say, if you're the kind of person that's inclined towards coding or engineering your own plugins and you know you want somewhere to start, it might be a good idea to watch my first video for Patcher, the everything you need to know video. I really break down the plugin, how to use it, and it should be a good place to start if you want to start developing custom tools for your own production and workflow. Because I know that sometimes a plugin or effects chain just doesn't quite cut it, and if you use Patcher, you can load all sorts of stuff in all sorts of orders, series, and parallel chains, and just make really complicated stuff that only you can understand. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a lot of fun with all those presets. Enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.